any second now. Thank you. Um, Mary Osborne is our speaker today who will be talking about dementia and six factors of ADLs. And she will tell us more about her wonderful services, which I believe that as a family caregiver are very much needed. Uh, so please tell us a little bit about your new company and then um, take it away. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Lynn. Thanks for having me and thanks for sharing your stories with me. Um, I'm excited to be here and talk with everybody. Like Lynn said, I'm really sorry. I do have to head out right after this, but if y'all do have questions afterwards, I put my email in the chat. Um, I can try my best to address these questions. I like to do general videos on my social media channels because I know a lot of questions that y'all may have, other people may have as well. So I can always put these answers in a video format and put these on social channels and then send these out to y'all as well. Um, so yeah, so let me start off with a quick intro. I always like hearing about what people do, what drives them, how they got there. So I am an occupational therapist and I'm a certified positive care approach consultant. I have 10 years of experience in dementia care and I am just so passionate about this work and I'm so excited to talk with you guys today about dementia and just cover some common questions and topics. And I hope that y'all can really leave today with just a better understanding of our role as caregivers and different techniques we can use to make our lives easier as well as our loved ones who are living with dementia. So I've worked in a variety of different settings over the years and the settings that I've always loved the most were memory care and long-term care. And over these past 10 years, I've moved, me and my husband have lived in different cities and states and I'm so grateful for these experiences because I was fortunate enough to work alongside great therapists throughout all of this and really learn as much as I could. So when I first started practicing, one of the first places I worked in was a skilled nursing facility. And they also had a long-term care and this was in North Carolina. I worked with this occupational therapist and she really just taught me all about dementia care and really the importance of quality of life and implementing the type of therapy that would bring a smile to the person living with dementia's face. And I saw the importance of what I could do and really the change that I could bring about when I started to focus on the person living with dementia's current abilities. And after working with this therapist early in my career, it really just changed the way I approached my job over these past years and how I really cared for those who are living with dementia. So over these past years, I've helped train staff about different approaches that they could implement to help. I've trained family members and this has ultimately led me to creating my own consulting company called Your Dementia Therapist. So my whole goal with this company is to provide help and support to caregivers and family members and help them better care for their loved ones through education, through problem solving difficult situations. I also do home safety visits for different recommendations for maximizing safety in the home environment. So whenever I was working as a treating occupational therapist, so whenever I would actually work directly with the person living with dementia, this was great for the hour that I was there. But at the end of the day, I realized, you know, I'm not the primary person providing the care the other 23 hours of the day. So I realized over these past 10 years that the only way that I could really see improvements were when everyone was on board. So caregivers, family members, and when they would help carry over some of the things that I taught. So I knew there was something more that I had to do. And I started to see that really the biggest impact I could have on someone living with dementia's life was through this caregiver and family education. So I saw how important this was, and this is the entire mission and vision of my company is to help you. So I've shifted my focus from directly working with the person living with dementia to working with the caregiver or family member to provide in-home visits, telehealth consulting, to really help you better help your loved one. So I'm gonna um, get into dementia. So I was thinking I would go over dementia, just do a brief overview and the stages of dementia. Is that okay with y'all if I start with that? Okay, cool. Okay, so dementia. So dementia is just a general term that we use when we're experiencing symptoms that interfere with your memory, your communication skills, and just other cognitive related abilities. And when these symptoms become severe enough to affect everyday life. And dementia usually develops in that in 
over the age of 65. So it's known as a late life disease for this reason. And I did see a statistic according to the World Health Organization that there are more than 55 million documented cases of dementia worldwide. And there are nearly 10 million new cases every year. So I thought that was interesting and I wanted to share that. But um, I was gonna talk about types of dementia, but instead I'm just gonna shift the focus into talking about the stages and just some real life examples and practical things that we can do as caregivers. But if you are interested in learning about the different types, I have on my blog page, I have a bunch of different articles on my website. I mean, there's probably like 30 posts up on different um, dementia types and just a bunch of different um, good resources for y'all. So I can leave that in the chat as well. But I do wanna briefly touch on the stages. So I know, and y'all might know that there are different assessments used to stage dementia and doctors and therapists can use these assessment tools. So the, a very common one that y'all might know is the GDS scale, which stages dementia one through seven, but I like to keep it simple and, and brief. And we're just gonna go through the three different stages according to the World Health Organization. And these stages are early, middle, and late. So the three stages of dementia. So I'm just curious, do y'all have a general understanding of what stage of dementia your loved one might be in? Very, if not, yeah. very late for mine. Okay. My mother was early uh, middle. Okay. And the, the neurologist told us moderately severe. Okay. Okay. And um, so we're going to discuss the three stages and just some things you might notice in each stage. I, I think it's a good thing to have a general understanding of what stage they might be in, just so you can better understand some of the changes that are going on and just have a general idea of what to expect. So like I said, the World Health Organization classifies these into early, middle, and late. So in the early stage, something that you might notice, some signs that you might notice are the individual becomes more forgetful than normal. They're losing track of time. They might feel lost in places that were once familiar to them. In the early stage, you'll see difficulty and we call this IDLs as OTs. And this is also known as instrumental activities of daily living. So these are the higher level tasks that we do as part of our daily routine, like handling the finances, the medication, the cooking, the cleaning. And something that I typically see in the early stage is the individual might be forgetting to pay the bills. Maybe the bills are stacking up. They're forgetting to take their medications at the correct times. Um, they're filling up the pill bottle wrong, things like that. Difficulty problem solving, learning new things is really difficult for them at this stage. And at the beginning of the stage, they're typically able to perform activities of daily living. And in the world of OTB, we call these ADLs. And this is like bathing, dressing, toileting, all these things that you do as part of your daily routine. So they're typically able to perform these pretty much independently at the early stages of this. But at the end of the early stage, you might see things like difficulty selecting appropriate clothing for the weather. They might not bathe as much as normal. And as things progress in this stage, they actually might need reminders and signage to perform these things. So that's just a little overview of the early stage. And the middle stage, so when the middle stage dementia sets in, these symptoms become a little bit more noticeable. So forgetting names easily, forgetting events, they're feeling lost in familiar places. They might have difficulty communicating in, in this stage, behavioral changes, asking the same question repeatedly. Um, and in this stage, they're really needing more assistance with the self-care. So the bathing, the dressing, the feeding, whether that be me providing verbal cues of how to do the task um, or physical assistance to actually help with the task. I do see wandering. This is something common I see in middle stage dementia. And this is something that happens, um, damage to the visual system in the temporal lobe of our brain. This causes those with dementia to lose the ability to recognize familiar faces and places. And so it's common for people living with dementia to wander or become lost or confused about their location. And this can happen in any stage, but from my experience, I see this mostly in the middle stage of dementia. And when the late stage of dementia sets in, 
all of these symptoms are noticeable by everyone around them. The individual with dementia will need full-time care. The symptoms are pretty severe. So almost full assistance with the uh, activities of daily living. They have really no concept of time in this, in this stage. And you might find that they're struggling to recognize their loved ones that they once knew, um, struggling to walk. They, you might see some behavioral changes like aggression in the early part of the stages. You might notice some contractures of the hands in this stage. So my focus as an OT in this stage is more family caregiver education. Might be focusing on positioning um, if they're in a wheelchair, just making sure they're upright to prevent risk of aspiration. So when they're swallowing, it doesn't go to the lungs, things like that. And um, really in this stage, they, if you ask them something, they're probably not gonna recall memories um, from the past. So when this happens in this stage, as an occupational therapist, we bring in sensory stimulation. So reading to them, playing music, telling stories to them, and really just trying to increase their quality of life in this stage. I actually have a course coming out that's gonna be all about sensory stimulation and the moderate severe stages. So it's gonna be something really great with different activity examples that I'll have to make sure that y'all um, have access to. Um, so let's see. So are any of y'all experiencing difficulty with I know you said, uh, Renee, that you were having difficulty getting your loved one engaged in just bathing, dressing, feeding. Are y'all having issues with your love with getting your loved one to participate in any of the self care? When my wife was in the middle stages, yeah, that okay. refused to bathe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And just, just know that y'all are not alone. I help clients address these specific concerns and these are all very, very common. Um, so I do wanna talk about just some specific factors that I look at related to ADL performance in dementia care. And really this can be applied to any of our ADLs. So the dressing, feeding, bathing, grooming, hygiene, toileting. Um, Current abilities. I am a big proponent of current abilities. I think this is a huge factor that is often overlooked in dementia care. And I found over the years that if we focus on what the person is able to do at that certain stage in dementia, then completing tasks will just go more smoothly overall. So I'm going to give you all an example. Like something I hear frequently is, you know, my mom used to participate in this word search puzzle all the time, but now she's not interested. And Maybe it's not that she's not interested, but maybe this activity is just too difficult to do at this time. So modifying it or changing it to something she can do will give her a sense of accomplishment or satisfaction. Now, of course, this is gonna look different in the moderate to severe stages, because like I said, we're gonna focus more on that sensory stimulation in these stages and functional activities of something that would be in there, stored in there, implicit long-term memory that is routine for them. So definitely this will differ as dementia progresses, just depending on the stage. So how can we focus on current abilities? We can be a good listener and observer. So we can pay better attention to the things that they're able to do. Um, and then the things that are frustrating them, we want to pay attention to those as well, just so we don't continue to frustrate them when we're trying to involve them in an activity. So um, number two, I wanted to talk about, so we talked about abilities, and then number two is approach. So when you're trying to get your loved one to complete a task like bathing, we really want to think about what are our approaches like. So I'm just gonna give you all a situation that I've seen happen before. And this is just an example, but let's say um, a family member comes in and they're like, mom, you haven't showered in days, you need a shower. And the person living with dementia is probably gonna say from what I've seen in the past, honey, that's not true. I just showered this morning. And then, you know, our normal reactions as a family member or caregiver, we're like, no, mom, you haven't. Like you, you didn't just shower. And so, then the person living with dementia is gonna get all frustrated and things probably aren't gonna go so well after that. So like I said, our first reaction might be to say something like the above statement. And 
when the person living with dementia responds, oh, that's not true. I showered this morning because they're not really remembering that they in fact didn't shower. But since I've already approached the situation like this, this is their reality that they've already showered. So now since I've already approached it like that, I'm going to need to enter this reality. So what I might say is, oh, so you showered this morning. I'm sorry. I must have forgotten. And depending on what their short-term memory is like, I'm going to try to go back maybe in a few minutes or an hour, just depending on what the individual's memory is like and trying a different approach. And um, in my consulting sessions, I help come up with customized approaches that help with different situations because I look at the individual and how the approach is currently being done and we go through all of that. So, um, so that is the approach. And then number three would be the routine. So what is the person living with dementia's routine? currently like and not only currently but you want to know what it was like prior to them having that diagnosis of dementia so i'm going to take self-feeding um feeding for example so what was their routine like when it comes to self-feeding so were they used to smaller meals throughout the day are they used to three meals a day what what did they like and what do they currently like and kind of combine the two Number four would be identifying unmet needs. So if the person who's living with dementia, and this I see this a lot, is reluctant to perform ADLs, the activities of daily living I was telling you about, and demonstrating some resistance with this, well, can we investigate further? Like what might be causing them to refuse this? And like I said earlier, it might be the short-term memory. Maybe they think they just performed the shower, but some other unmet needs, some unmet needs might include like, are they in pain? Are they fearful? So I've had actually people in the past who were maybe had a fall in the shower, like a few weeks before, and that was in their mind. Like they still remembered that moment. And now they are reluctant to perform because they're scared to do the task. Um, are they cold? I find that this is a big one for bathing. Um, so we just need to make sure that we're setting up the environment accordingly. And number five, I want to talk about brain changes. So the person living with dementia is going to experience difficulties as the dementia progresses related to things like planning, initiating tasks, um, regulating their emotions, the attention span. So you're gonna notice that attention span will decrease as dementia progresses. Problem solving. Um, maybe they can't figure out how to even perform a task and they need your assistance and cues to help out. Following multi-step directions. So more than one step direction, this is gonna become harder as the dementia progresses. So you might wanna think about um, presenting choices. Would you like to wear this or this and hold up the two items for them to choose from? So they still have that sense of independence, um, but they're not having, they're not getting frustrated by having to make a decision with an open-ended question. So they're also going to have difficulties with sequencing the task. So something that I've seen, maybe they're wanting to put on like the shorts before the underwear and we have to provide some assistance for this task. Um, the recall, so the short-term memory, the processing information. So even in the later, so when they get to the moderate to severe stages of dementia, it could take up to 90 seconds for a response from our individuals. So if you're asking a question, we wanna make sure that we're going slow, we're presenting the information very slowly and we're giving them time to respond if they're able to, even if it's, it might look like a head nod at this, at the later stages. And, um, and yes, of course, like difficulty communicating with us towards the later stages. So in the later stages, it might look like us reading them a book and recalling some of these memories for them and reminiscing with them and just telling them about what, you know, what was important to them when they were younger. So um, I just think that by understanding the changes that are happening in the individual who has dementia, 
it can really just give us a better understanding of the type of assistance that we should be providing for each task. Now, if this is something that you're finding difficulty with, like you're like, okay, what can my loved one do? Always know that there's an option that you can contact the primary care physician and see if they can write an order for physical or occupational therapy just to see their current abilities and where they're at and any kind of recommendations that they might have for that individual. So that's always um, something that I like to suggest, just so y'all know, because um, that could be something that the doctor could write an order for. And then, then the therapist could spend time doing education with the family as well. So my final one is rapport. So I always like to think about the rapport between the person living with dementia and the family members, caregivers. This plays a huge role in dementia care. What's the relationship like between the person who is trying to get them to perform a certain task and the person who's living with dementia? So does the person living with dementia trust that person? And do they have the type of relationship where they would be willing to follow your guidance. So, and if, if it's not, if it's with a certain task that, that you know they're not gonna be receptive to your feedback on, you can always think about trying to get someone else involved that they might listen to. And rapport is one of those things that if it is a new caregiver involved, it just takes some time to build that rapport between the caregiver and the person living with dementia. So um, those are the six factors that I have, I put these together because over the, I was thinking about over the years, the six things, I mean, there are so many more, <laughs> but I was thinking about my top ones that I felt that are just so important in the world of dementia care that we just really need to take into consideration. And if there's one thing that I want y'all to leave here today with, it's really just trying to focus on current abilities and seeing what your loved one is able to do at the stage that they're in and what would give them a sense of meaning and purpose in the stage that they're currently in. So really just thinking about that and trying to incorporate these things into the care. And I found that by incorporating all of these things into the care, you'll see more success with the person living with dementia and also with how you're caring for them as well. So. That was it for my presentation. And I really thank y'all for having me here. Thank you.